Hello, Moshang viewers. Today is our great pleasure to invite Alan Shen. Good morning, Alan. Could you introduce yeah, yourself to our audience and talk about yeah. what you're doing, what's your background, and uh, especially your campaign? Yeah, uh, thank you, Lydia, and good morning to all the audience. And again, thank you for inviting me to the, your show. So again, my name is Alan. So a little bit about myself. I was born in China, moved here uh, when I was uh, about 12 years old. And my parents came here first, actually. They came here about when I was seven or eight. So I spent a few years with grandparents. I saw someone post a question on WeChat, say, hey, how did I grow up here and how did I, my values and visions and all that stuff shift. So it basically for me, it's like coming here, sure, there's a culture shock, there's a getting used to things and uh, you just kind of immerse yourself to, to the culture and get into it. So I, I hear a lot of the people who complain, oh, the American culture is so hard to get into it. But they all, always treat you as outsiders. But I will say the opposite is true because if you throw yourself into it, they will welcome you and they will take you in. Because I went to a school, middle school and high school, it's like 95 to 97% white. And if you introduce yourself and you want to be part of them, they will gladly take you in. Now, if you just open yourself and go into the circle, they will take you in. So part of it, I think it's like, you need to you know, get out of your comfort zone, get into it. So, and they will welcome you. So uh, that's one advice to answer the question on WeChat. I know it's been blocked, but I saw a question like that. Um, thank, thank you. I think that very small portion, we probably didn't really get rid of discrimination and some nasty people, they are always there in any society. But the key thing, as you mentioned, is open yourself to the new yeah. environment and embrace people surrounding you and yeah. explore the new world. That's very important. We like our culture, ancient background, but should not limit to it. And because we came into a new world, one of the most important things is to explore the new environment. Yep. Thank you so much for yep. telling us Thank about you. your feeling growing up in China as well as in the U.S. and that contributed to what you are today. And we know you went to military immediately after high school. I think that that's not a very common for many first generation immigration families. Probably your parents or right. yourself are very unique. We want to hear more about is what made you decide to go to the military? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I know it's not very common. Uh, most Chinese parents would definitely want to say, go to Harvard or MIT, right? So that's like the Chinese or, or Stanford if you're in California. But um, for me, it's like my parents were, they, they pushed me to study hard in high school, but never was so like, you have to go to Harvard. Like that was never part of my pressure. So it's just a study, do do well, make sure you, you get good grades, but you now you, you have enough autonomy to decide for yourself. So then I saw this military ad that answered to it at the time, because what because I was like 18, right? At the time. So what looked attractive to me is like develop your leadership skill, be part of a team, uh, be part of a greater cause and it helps you to pay for your college. I was like, oh, it helps to pay my college and, and you know, uh, also leadership skills. So that was attractive to me because when I was in high school going to college, we were still in the concept and culture that we need to pay for our college. So parents paying for your college, that was like a few years, many years after I graduated high school. So when I was in high school, it was still a time that it's a sentiment and the notion that you need to pay for your college. You need to find a job, find a way to pay for your college tuitions. So it's like, oh, this is a good way that I can you know, pay for my college. Um, so after I joined the army, it's during the services when I was in the army, that's when I realized that wow, I'm being part of something greater than myself. I'm, I'm actually serving the country and the appreciations and gratitude from the people just blow me away because uh, 
and give you one example. Because one day after training, I was still in my uniforms. I went to a local、uh, Caribou Coffee, like a coffee sh- coffee shop, right? I was just getting a coffee, right? After training, get my coffee and then go, right? Then there these、uh, older ladies just came over and tried to shake my hand, say thank you for serving our country. That was like the time it just dawned on me. It was like, wow,、uh, actually, I'm being part of a service that's greater than one's life. You're actually serving the country, and that pride has just been with me、uh, ever since. That's great. You have self-reliant goals from very early stage when you were eighteen, and you also you feel great to serve the country. Those are noble.、Yeah. And so, I think that's probably contributed to your conservative values a lot. Then, what's your political proposal, and what changes do you want to bring to Minnesota? Can you introduce more about the district that you are running for, the position, the office? Yeah, I'll add a little bit something about my sure that that upbringing does instill some conservative values. But if you have seen my website. I invite you to, to go to my homepage. There's my walkway testimony because I used to be a huge Democrat fan, and I switched over. So huge Obama fan for seven and a half years, and then switched over. So again, I would say I didn't leave the Democratic Party. The party left me because you now you have seen the Elon Musk meme, right? So his positions been the same, but. The party just gone way to the left, and、uh, so that now he's center right. So I, w- I was like, maybe like that, but my my core values didn't shift too much. But the party has changed too much.、Uh, even when I was a Democrat, I was still a patriot. I was still saluting the flag. I was now still、uh, encourage American manufacturers and moving manufacturers back to the U.S. and buy American stuff. Those that did not change, so the party shifted. But okay, talking about my policies and about Minnesota, my district is、uh, the House District 40B, which doesn't make sense to anyone. It consists of two suburb cities north of St. Paul, Roseville and Shoreview. So it's like a inner city suburb, like a suburb cities that's closer to the inner cities. So it's.、Um, Traditionally very blue, but I noticed that the Democrat voters in the district are mostly union workers and government employees. So they're traditional union workers, like they still have traditional American values. So I think how far left the Democrat Party is going, it will not like these union workers might not feel. That's their party anymore. You mentioned your district have a lot of blue collar families. I think they probably care about the middle class jobs, and yep, because、yep. our past presidents, except for Trump, other presidents, they most of them support, especially unlimited globalization, which caused a lot of middle class job and manufacturing jobs offshore.、Yes. So, could you tell us more about this and what's your view、yeah. on this economic issue? And do you think Trump's policy of bring Jobs back to America is reasonable, and、uh, what kind of thing can we do, especially from your state level? I, I think the notion to bring back jobs back to the U.S. manufacturers is definitely reasonable. I mean, actually, the reason that the globalization, many countries shifting their jobs to Asia to China,、uh, is part something to do with Bill Clinton's、uh, initiative to bring China into the WTO. So when Bill Clinton, so this goes all the way back to the 90s, when Bill Clinton brought China into the WTO, basically opens doors to take all the jobs, manufactured jobs, to China, and China at the time gave a lot of favorable terms. So a lot of it has to do with politics and politicians that they did it because、um, they open the doors and ch- Chinese products can come into the U.S. at almost. Zero tariff, right? And then China has this system that, which I'm not going to get into too de- deep, that they can keep the cost of labor very low, or that they basically work for free, so they can make,、uh, no Disney toys, Christmas lights at, at free, free labor cost, 
So then that's a vicious way to compete. So if the politicians then keep the, the fair trade and you have to pay your uh, workers at a certain wage, many jobs would be back to the U.S. I mean, a lot of it's based on politicians' policies and their regulations, which I'll get into it a little bit. Because uh, regulation is the next highest cost for companies. Uh, how much you regulate them, and if you over-regulate them, they have to leave um, to reduce their cost to countries that do, do not have such high excessive regulations. I mean, I'm just saying common sense, regulation is good, but what the U.S. has is like very, very overburdened, excessive, unnecessary regulations. Uh, I'll get into it a little bit uh, for Minnesota. So, What's your views on Minnesota? I mean, Minnesota probably have blue-collar feminists and also have many liberals and also conservatives. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a, a mixture of a broad uh, background of people. I think a lot of Minnesota people want to have jobs. Could yeah, you based yeah. on your state to tell us more about how to create more job opportunities in Minnesota? I'll tell you some stories about Minnesota because about Minnesota I can talk for quite a bit. Minnesota is a big state for agriculture and medical, uh, like medical technologies and uh, agriculture and food. So I, I'm sure you have heard uh, Minnesota-based companies like General Mill and uh, 3M, it's another big Minnesota company. So we're in like medical technologies and all that, and many of the biggest. Uh, medical companies like Medtronic that started in Minnesota. But because of Obama's tax rules, Medtronic's headquarters moved from Minneapolis to Ireland to avoid Obama's corporate tax. So I'm just saying, when you have government doing all these policies, corporations can do stuff to counter it. It's not like you increase their, their corporate tax and they're just going to now hand you everything you wanted they can these are global companies they can move their headquarters from country to country so they think that hey hey uh, we just increase their taxes and they're gonna give us all the money and this hate the rich kind of mentality is really from socialist cultures i mean that they're pushing so before trump's tax cut america's corporate tax the rate is probably among one of the highest, yep, especially yep. in the developed economies. Yep, yep. But the Trump tax cut reduced it to the lower bottom of the developed economies, which provided a, a more competitive environment to bring more yeah. jobs back. Yeah. I support that policy. Yeah, you, you reduce the corporate taxes, it's cheaper to do business here, and they want to stay here because if you they stay here, they still pay taxes, they still hire workers, and their R and D, their technologies still stay here. If you force the companies out, they bring their technologies, their jobs, uh, their tax revenues to other countries. So I just don't see how that's a good idea. But again, uh, Democrat voters just think so simply that oh, increase the taxes, they're going to give us more. I mean, it's like. Well, then they're just going to pay Irish government taxes, not here. How is that helping you? <laughs> so since we talked about the globalization, talk about a deep in the system, and also mention about the censorship, let us go more deeper on this topic. Just a couple of days ago, we published yep. your campaign article on WeChat. It received more than 12,000 views within two days which was impressive. However, WeChat censored your article. What's your reflection on is under what are your views on censorship under groupthink? Since both China and the US both have these kind of problems. Of course, China's censorship is much severe than the US. However, the big tech company increased their censorship. And some people, especially if your stance are on the middle or on the conservative side, you can fear the increase of censorship a lot. So yeah, that's a big awesome. issue. And our constitution constrained government's power on censorship, but they didn't say about uh, how to constrain the international companies. However, those international companies are so powerful. Some of them can 
compete with the power of government if they lean to one side of the party disproportionately. Like we all know, the big tech lean to Democratic Party at maybe 90 percent, even higher percentage. That's alarming. Situation. So, what's your view on is, and if you elected state representative, what kind of bill are you going to raise to solve this problem from Minnesota?、Uh, before I get into it, there's a saying about my friends in China about on WeChat, is that how do you judge someone who's brave and in, in、uh, stand on the side of justice and speaks the truth based on how many times they're censored on WeChat? So if you get censored on WeChat, give yourself a pat on the back. You're speaking the truth. But again, big tech like Facebook, YouTube, very heavy in censoring people's voices. So how can we do as a state? Well, I mean, Facebook's not based here, but of course we can pass a, a bill in the state of Minnesota protecting freedom of speech. Then just like how Texas is doing it, they're suing Facebook, I believe, right? If I remember right, we as a state we can sue these big tech companies about protecting free speech. I mean, because Facebook's got this protection, we don't know if they're a platform or a publisher. Because、uh, if they're a publisher, they can edit the content on their platform, just like New York Times or CNN. So they can edit whatever they have on their content.、Uh, but if they're a platform, they should not. Just like on AT and T or、uh, T-Mobile, I can say whatever I want to say on AT and T, but AT and T is not going to be held responsible for the content I say when I make phone call, right? So, but. Facebook and these social media are kind of in the middle. Like they can edit, but they're also not held responsible. So maybe we have to like look into how do we hold these big techs responsible, or if they're a platform, they they should not be able to cancel people, uh, right? Uh, it's like if you, I mean, Facebook is becoming a communist Facebook, really.、Uh, they, they censor you if they disagree. Right, and they also. I read an article that these fact checkers used by Facebook, they basically just do a Google search. Right, if you say something they disagree, they if they don't find something on Google, they say, oh, that's false. It's like really. Yeah, that's a problem. They always circle the information within their echo chamber. I think that any democracy. Where face stress, if people only follow one side of the debates, we should let people have more fair debates because I don't think、uh, any side can have all the facts and、uh, choose. So it's very important to have a protect our First Amendment and protect、yeah. our free speech. Thank you. What's your suggestion and advice to our audience? Most of our audience are first generation immigrants. One is to keep the good things of your. Old, old culture, like the traditional culture, that's good.、Uh, keep it. I mean, actually, a lot of the、uh, traditional Chinese cultures are similar to what we hold dear in conservative values, like family values, right? Raising our children, you know, in a family with both parents,、uh, and, and all that. But also, get out of your comfort zone to embrace a new culture here. But when I say new culture, that the American culture means. American traditional culture, right?、Uh, also about、uh, family values, about freedom of speech, about the rights to bear, bear and carry arms, but not about the Democrat policies, right? I mean, I wouldn't call that American culture. That's just something new that they just pushed, right? This seventy some gender stuff. I wouldn't say that's American culture. That's just uh, politicized uh, Democrat policies. And、um, yeah,、uh, just open yourself, get out of your comfort zone, and embrace a new culture. I mean, and make make more friends. That's my advice. Thank you. We need more young people like you who can think out of the box, who like to try and ambitious, also patriotic to the country. It's great to talk to you again. Thank you for your time and your platform.